the south side of Chicago and guaranteed rate field. MLB the show has interleague action for you this afternoon. It's the Cincinnati Reds going up against the Chicago White Sox. First pitch coming your way next. About to get started here. And out of the hill in this one, Dylan Cease. What should we keep an eye on here? Four-pitch guy, he's got some options to work with in terms of keeping hitters off balance. So we'll see how he decides to utilize those weapons through this start here and whether or not he's able to mix them all in early or if he wants to hold something back a little bit later, maybe second, third time through the order, and give them something they haven't seen. It's tough when you know a guy's got that in his back pocket as a hitter you really have to stay on your toes. T.J. Friedel in the box here lets that one go for a ball. That's and ball. another ball. Deals. Next offering popped in the air, right field. Fletcher settles under this one, and there's one down. Here's the lineup for the Reds. Singy, we're looking at a really young lineup here, so not much experience, but it also means they're going to bring a lot of energy to the table most days. Well, we're in a golden age of young players. I mean, these players, they're getting up to the majors. They're dominating from a young age, bringing home plenty of hardware early in their careers. I mean, before they even get to free agency. So, you know, when you consider all of that, I love seeing the kind of energy that a team like this brings to the yard every day, day in and day out. Every day during batting practice, these outfielders get about 10 minutes of balls in the gaps. They practice this, and when the game comes, they make the play perfectly. And first offering is fouled off. Steer goes 5 feet, 11 inches, 26 years old, and he was a third-round pick back in 2019. Two out spaces empty. Yeah, that skips into dirt. This guy at the dish excels in two strike counts. Got to be careful with him out there on the mound. And a foul ball. He stays alive. Two down. Nobody on. Swings and misses. And good work there as he gets a one, two, three. Nobody left for Cincinnati. Now it's the White Sox turn. It's a scoreless ball game. Back after this on the show. Back here on the south side. Today's starting pitcher, Hunter Green. Well, this guy has the ability to command the game. He's got to limit damage, make his pitches, and avoid that big inning. If he can work around that, he can give a quality start, hand this off to the bullpen later on, and put his team in a position to win a game. We go to the bottom of the first. Now it's the veteran outfielder, Andrew Benintendi. And that's in there at the knees. Green goes six feet, five inches. He features a four-seam fastball, a slider, and he works in a changeup. The 0-1. And a big swing and a miss. And he really sells the changeup with that arm action. 99 miles per hour to finish him off. Well, that event seemed to be over as soon as it started. Three-pitch strikeout. You've got to be better at the plate right there, at least to foul something off, extend that at bat. Andrew Vaughn now. That's a strike across the top of the zone. One down, base is empty. 
And ball one. The one one is fouled off. You can see he was trying to stay back long enough to handle the off speed pitch, but just a little tardy on the fastball. Out of line, out towards center. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. Out number two. Time to check out the lineup for the White Sox. This is a veteran-led lineup right here. A lot of players with plenty of experience singing. Yeah, no doubt about that, Boog. These guys have been around the, the game for a long time, and they may not have the flash that they once did, but they've got the wisdom to be able to understand different situations, be able to oh, think the with ball. the opponent and sometimes in One front ball. of the opponent. Okay. And you always seem to see a team like this. They come to the ballpark, they know how to get down to business, and they understand what the job is at hand. Another ball. He hasn't wanted to challenge him. Both of those pitches off the plate away. Don't expect anything down the heart of the plate. You may just have to be patient and take your walk here. Swing and a line drive, slicing into right field. And they take care of Robert for the out. And that is that. Down in order go the White Sox. Scoreless after one. Here on the south side, top of the second, now batting Jamer Candelario. Cease, back to work. Upstairs. Next pitch inside. Two balls, no strikes. Larry Bullard, our umpire behind the plate. But Bullard's got a pretty standard strike zone. Sometimes they'll have you guessing a little bit, but overall, well-respected umpire in the league. Oh. Yeah, that's a little bit high. And that's ball three. <laughs> and there's the automatic. Well, it looks like he's wanting to work the upper part of the strike zone. What does that mean? Top hand better be working for the hitters. Adjust that side a little bit. Give yourself a chance to hit. And the 3-1. There's the strike. Foul ball, and it remains a full count. Payoff pitch. Fouled off again. And it remains three and two. Righty delivers. Base hit. Jonathan India to play. Right through there for a strike. Oh. Swings through that one. The two strikes may see some movement over there at first base, trying to stay out of the double play right here. And yeah, that's off. The inside edge. Ball one. With the go ahead run at first, here at the top of the second. That one ran inside, almost got him. Definitely got the hitter conscious of the pitch inside. I really think the outer half is open. Here's a 2-2. Two -two. Hacks and misses. It's a strikeout. That really expanded the zone right there with that fastball off the outside corner of the play. Got him to chase it. That's a tough one to lay off of because it starts close to you and just continues to run away from you in that batter's box. So it's a really nice pitch with two strikes. Ellie De La Cruz digs in now. 
Yeah, that's outside. Yeah, that's ball one. And a pitch. There's a swing and a miss. One and one. That pitch in for a strike. Gonna count one and two. On the ground a second, might be two. Over to DeYoung. Not in time at first. It's a fielder's choice. Well, there's a lot riding on that at bat right there. Nice job of the pitcher to bear down, make the pitch, get the ground ball. Excellent piece of work. Christian Encarnacion Strand, the next to hit for the Reds. That one catches the corner for a strike. If I'm at the dish right now, I am aggressive over the heart of the plate. This guy's been filling up the strike zone, so ball, you know you're going to get a good strike. pitch to hit. And as nasty as the stuff is, you might as well take all three swings. Two outs to the left side, but it is well foul. Right-hander kicks, deals, and another ball. That's inside, and it's a full count. That one called okay. just inside, I think, and on the mound, He's trying to get a little bit of an explanation. Doesn't seem to be too bothered by it, though, but he clearly thought it clipped the corner. Outside, and that is ball four. Well, that could be a big walk in this ball game. Moves the go-ahead run into scoring position, so some pressure pitches coming up in this next A-B. Next for Cincinnati, Tyler Stevenson. And a strike. De La Cruz, the lead runner out at second. Encarnacion Strand on at first with two down. And yeah, that's off the inside edge. One and one. Wouldn't chase that time. Could be some action here on this next pitch. Couple runners on. Probably a challenge pitch coming. Two on hammered, but foul. Here comes a pitch. And a pop up right side, foul territory. And that's the third out. Red strand a couple. We'll go to the bottom of the second. No score. Bottom half of inning number two. And now it's switch hitting third baseman, Yoan Moncada. The right hander back to work. And that is in for a strike. It's 0 and 1. Well, we call that key holding. Even though it's right there and looks pretty good, if he doesn't love it, he's not going to swing that early in the count. Check swing. Did he go? Yes, he did. Line drive. Base hit. So a man on base to start the inning. I'd say a mistake pitch in an 0-2 count. Too good of a pitch to hit right there. You have to expand the zone. Keep that leadoff man off first base. Here's Aloy Jimenez. And 
there's a strike. Good heater at 98. Righty to the plate. Oh. One ball, one strike. Way to lay off that pitch down. At the belt and fires. On the ground, two ball. Over to second for one. Relay to first, double play. As a former player, watching 5 4 3 double plays brings back some adrenaline. It's such an exciting play, and it's always a great reminder of baseball being such a team sport. Now it's the right fielder, Dominic Fletcher. In the air, left field down the line. And that is a foul ball. And a pitch. Oh. One and one. Boog, he never moved because he never had time to. But that kind of velocity, you'd prefer that pitcher work away. In there at the knees. Good zip on that fastball at the bottom of the zone. If he's there all day, it's going to be a tough one for the hitters. Got him looking. That's a strikeout. We move to the third with no score. Back at guaranteed right field. Well, here we go. Top of the third scoreless game. And here is Will Benson. Here the right hander back to work. That one missed. This one popped up. Moncada drifts towards it. Squeezes it. And there's one away. And now the center fielder, T.J. Friedel. He's 0 for 1. First pitch just misses. Up the middle. Fires to first on the run. Barely got him for the out close play. Matt McClain, the next to hit for the Reds. He's someone that you might not describe as having elite level speed, but he can absolutely move, and it is a factor in his game. Slice the other way. That's a base hit. So a two out knock keeps the inning alive. Just so sound in his mechanics. Hits against a firm front side. And the hands just continue to carry through the middle of the field. Spencer Steer, the next to hit for the Reds. First offering misses badly for ball one. Top of the third, no score. Good speed on the base pass. He handles the bat very well. I wouldn't be surprised if the skipper puts on some type of hit and run or a run and hit. That's a hit, and that moves the go-ahead run to score in position with two gone. Back-to-back -back singles, that's about as textbook as it gets. Got his stride and load out of the way early. He stayed inside that ball and squared it up out front. Man, that was like he was in the cage hitting off a tee. A chance now to take the lead, and at this point in the game, that could be a deciding run. So now here's the Reds cleanup hitter, Jamer Candelario. That one pulled foul. With the go ahead run standing at second, we're here in the top half of inning number three. Now a pop up on the infield. Gone under it. Drops into the glove, and that's the third out. Home half of the third coming up. No score.
Back here with my pal Ziggy. Now here is Paul DeYoung. And the pitch. Fouled off. He was late. The wide to kick the pitch. In the air to left down the line. Steer should have this one. Pulls it in for the out. Nicky Lopez up to the plate. This is a guy who's in the line of first and foremost because of what he contributes defensively, Chris. And when you talk about preventing runs from being scored, this guy is a big contributor. And it finds its way through for a hit. So the go-ahead run is on base with a knock. Now, no waiting around right there. He was ready to swing it on the first pitch. Just one of those seeing eye base hits through the infield. He just kind of rolled over on it a little bit, but sometimes those can find a hole and get you a knock. Man at first with one gone. Martin Maldonado up to hit. Kind of a throwback. No batting gloves. First pitch, and he just misses. One ball. No straight. One away, tie game, go ahead, run, stands at first. Here in the last half of the third. Out in front and foul to the left side. He's getting the barrel to the ball. He's just got to work on that timing a little bit. In the air, right field, brings it in. And there's two down. So the lineup flips over. Andrew Benintendi steps to the plate for the White Sox. Let off the game with a strikeout. Close, but called a ball. Ball one. Close pitch there, and he's kind of wondering where it missed, you know? Getting a feel for each umpire's strike zone is something that pitchers and hitters really have to think about and work on from game to game and sometimes from at bat to at bat. And a 1-0. Fall off foul. Looked like you got a little excited on that fastball. You've got to think to yourself, you want to stay up the middle. That way, if you're a little bit early, you hit it out of the ballpark. If you're a little late, opposite field not. This one in the air right field. Benson makes the grab, and that's the inning. So one left for the White Sox. And we're still knotted at zero. Out of the fourth, leading off, Jonathan India. The pitch. And that one fouled off. Pitch in the dirt, and the count is one and one. Right side, and that one handled. Vaughn takes it to the bag. That's the first out in the top of the fourth. That's a huge defensive play in the late stages of the game. It might not be the most challenging we've seen today, but it needed to be made. That's helping your team. Now it's the shortstop, Ellie De La Cruz. And the first pitch misses for ball one. You don't want to get beat by a fastball in, and he spits on that one. Swing and a miss. And it's one and one. And the right hander deals. Just missed. Christian Encarnacion Strand on deck for Cincinnati. Next offering is in for a strike. 
Swings, throw it in, that's a strikeout. And Chris, that's a way to neutralize his speed by keeping him off base. And the defense breathes a sigh of relief because he puts pressure on everyone if he can put the ball in play. But that's how you do it. Keep him off balance, get him out of there, and deal with the next guy. Now a chance for Christian Encarnacion Strand. In there for strike one. foul ball all tied up top half of inning number four and a swing and a miss and that's that Reds go down quietly still no score Ball. As he turns on the rubber, and with that good live arm delivers, and that misses off the outside edge. And that's off the inside edge. Two and oh. And that's down and away. Luis Robert up next. Next offering is in for a strike. That one is absolutely belted. Friedel on the move, heading back. Pulls it in on the warning track. Man, I love that route. The ball was smoked. He knew he had to get back to the track right away. Turned his back on the infield. Got to the spot. Turned around and made a nice catch. Luis Robert now. Outfield deep here. Trying to prevent anything over their heads. There's a strike. Base is empty one away. We're here in the bottom of the fourth. That misses the zone, and that's ball one. Really going after him here. All fastballs to get ahead in the count. Fights that one away, still one and two. Ball is foul, and the pressure is building. One, two now. Fouls it back with two strikes. Good battle here, about to be the eighth pitch of the at bat. In the air, out towards right center. Makes the grab two down. Now that third baseman, Here is Moncada, and he's already singled in this game. And that one missing low. One ball, two straight. Fouled off to the right. Pitch misses. Now two balls and a strike. Right through there for a strike. Two down, nobody on. Beloy Jimenez in the on-deck circle for the White Sox. The pitch. 
And down on strikes he goes. And it's a three up, three down inning. Nothing doing for the White Sox. And we are still scoreless. And we're back. Top five, John Shelby with Chris Singleton. And leading it off, Tyler Stevenson. The pitch. Hard grounder into the outfield for a knock. Off to a good start with a leadoff knock. Well, that started and ended pretty quickly. No messing around right there. I really like that swing, man. He didn't just push it the other way through the infield. He drove it that way, and it kind of makes me think he was thinking opposite field as he stepped into the box. Got a pitch he liked, and he got it done. Will Benson, the next to hit for the Reds. Drilled to right, way back there, and that is gone. A gigantic blast and it gives him the lead in the fifth it's two nothing he only needed one swing to square it up not wasting any time in that at bat food aggressive and it paid off Well, he went up there, oh, oh, looking to do damage. I think he had his sight set on that pitch. He went and got it and circled the bases. T.J. Friedel, the next to hit for the Reds, known for his late-inning heroics. can be tough to bounce back after a big home run but nobody on nobody out you just have to treat it as a fresh inning left hand batter waits and that's in for a strike the real threats are coming up already giving up a home run in this inning it's going to really have to bear down and one and two Gets a piece and stays alive. The one two. And another ball. Well, this is a guy that can be frustrating for pitchers because he fouls off so many pitches and grinds out the at bat. I'm sure there's some times where a pitcher would rather just give up a first pitch single than have to waste six or seven pitches on one hitter. Two runs across in the inning, and we're at the top of the fifth. And it's filled up. Outside, and that is ball four. It wasn't easy, but he earned that walk after a long at bat. Well, he's starting to look a little gassed to me, and we'll see if they go to the bullpen in this spot or not. In now for the Reds, Matt McClain, one for two. That misses, and that is ball one. In the dirt. To second, and he's out. You know, Bird, this is the part of the game that oftentimes is overlooked. This is the great work. Great job of the catcher using his body to deaden that pitch, keeps it close, and then throws a strike down to second. That's off. Kicks and fires. Gets the outside corner with that one. Still only one out here in the inning. 
Swings through that high fastball. I think he was a little excited there, saw the fastball, but needed a step ladder to get to that one. He's going to have to tighten it back up. He wants to have a good at bat. Gets a piece there. We'll do it again. Three, two. Got him looking, and he did not like the call. Well, just couldn't pull the trigger on the fastball right there, and I don't think he was taking it, thinking it might be a called ball or anything. I just think he was flat out frozen. Did not expect that location, in my opinion. Spencer Steer getting ready to hit. First pitch, and that's in for a strike. Not what he's looking for there in the 0-0 count. Looks like he wants the ball down in his own. Now no, one and one. One and one. Swing and a miss, and that's strike two. Well, there's a certain point where you have to commit to what you think you see, and he guessed wrong right there. Nasty slider with just terrific bite at the end. The 2-2. Two -two. Ground ball up the middle. Sneaks through, base hit. Joey gets on base and keeps it going. That's back-to-back -back singles for him. Really nice job staying up the middle with his approach. He didn't try to do too much with the pitch. Just shot it through the infield. Jamer Candelario now at the plate. Now fly ball to right center. Robert moves under it. Hauls it in to end the inning. Cincinnati plates a pair on this homer. It's now a 2-0 ball game. Major League Baseball is on the show. Ready to go for the last half of the inning. Aloy Jimenez now. All these fans definitely want to get involved in the game all it's going to take is to get the leadoff man or even a base runner on and that's in for a strike you know these white Sox just aren't putting great swings on the baseball in this one they're trying to find ways to drive the ball with some authority but it's just not happening for them so far zero extra base hits in the game so it's been tough for them to get anything going and that one lifted in the air center field Friedel settles underneath it corrals it and there's one away. Sometimes you have to keep chipping away until you break through. But it's a lot easier to put runs on the board when you have runners in scoring position because they put themselves there. And now the right fielder, Dominic Fletcher, struck out looking at his first at bat. But he chases a high fastball there. On a line, base hit. So a man aboard now with one away. Now, that's shortstop. now it's Paul DeYoung up to the plate. Fly to left his first time. And in ball one. What an and yeah, that one is inside. Well, an interesting situation. One swing, you can tie up the ball game. But if you're patient and work a walk, then you bring the game winning run to the plate. This one driven deep, way back there, and it's gone. We are tied. A massive home run. It's 2-2. That one just sounded different. And might have been the loudest moment yet. Man, my ears are ringing. I can feel that swing from the boot.
2 0 count, a hitter is on high alert. This is what you look for to be in the driver's seat here. He got a pitch that he could handle, and he hit that pitch really hard. Nice home run. So, up next for Chicago, Nicky Lopez. And that's a little high. One out, base is empty. Just missed. Green, maybe a little less aggressive on the mound right now after that home run, Chris. Yeah, it seems that way. You know, guys, they can come out, feel good, but then all of a sudden get touched up a little bit, and they start trying to throw instead of pitch. They're not trusting their stuff. Left-hand hitter waits. And strike two. Well, he's been good for the most part. Is it going to take someone going out to the mound to maybe refocus him a bit? No, partner, every pitcher's a little different. I, I liken it to you. Sometimes you come in and you're not as focused, and I kind of do what it takes to get you on track, and then you have a great show. Uh, so perhaps it's the same with him. Nobody really wants their rhythm broken up, but sometimes they need a little pick-me-up. Outside, and that is ball four. Oh, he tried to nibble right there and just missed his spot. Hitter didn't offer at it. Now he has somebody to worry about over at first. And next to hit for the Sox, Martin Maldonado. And fouled off. Trying to keep this a 2-2 game. Last half of inning number five. That one finds the zone. And a count is 0-2. Good approach right there. You want to get something just a little higher that you can elevate. Stand on that double play. And he deals. Some heat there at 98 miles an hour. Back to the top of the White Sox lineup. Andrew Benintendi steps to the plate for the White Sox. Swing and a miss at 100 miles an hour. Swings through that. And that's off the inside edge. Now one and two. Lopez, the runner at first with two gone. Swings and misses, struck him out. That's the third out, and we're headed to extras. But two come across to score in the inning, courtesy of this two-run homer. And we're deadlocked now at two apiece. You're watching Major League Baseball exclusively on the show. All right, we go to the top half of inning number six. And now it's going to be Jonathan India. The pitch. And a good eye there. Popped up to the left in the foul ground. Pulls it down and he makes the catch. And there's one down. So digging in, Ellie De La Cruz. Well, first base open. Really no reason to pitch to this hitter right here. Put him on, have the force at second first, perhaps getting any ending oh. double play. The shortstop takes the ball. One out. The go-ahead run is at second. And we're at the top half of the sixth. That's inside. Now 2-0. Oh. And you got to wonder with first base open. One out. Is he going to get a pitch to hit? That's out to center field. Drops into the glove. And there's two down. Christian Encarnacion Strand, the next to hit for the Reds. Swing and a miss. 
That's strike one. Just a bit tardy there. Not sure if he had a hard time picking it up out of the hand or if he was sitting off speed. Kick swing. Now he looked down to first. And yes, he did. He went around. Two down. Go ahead, run in scoring position. And here in extra innings. Fights it off. You'll see another. Check swing, appeal to first. No swing, just held it back there. And a swing and a miss. And a nice inning of work there as he sets him down. One, two, three. Well, this guy competes hard. We see the emotion there. I love it. Great job of getting out of the jam. Here on the south side, and now the first baseman, Andrew Vaughn. Man at second, nobody out. Chris, certainly one of the things in his head is trying to get the runner over. Yeah, the way that we see the game played today, though, guys are not sacrificing as much just to get that runner across. They're really looking at doing damage. Slugging is the name of the game. Great catch, foul ground up against the wall. Runner tagging for third. And now it's Luis Robert. This is all about situational hitting. It's crucial in this spot. Do whatever it takes to put the ball in play, and hopefully you find a gap in the defense. First offering, and it just misses. The winning run at third here in the bottom of the sixth. That's a little bit low. I think ultimately you want to tie him up, get the ball in on the plate so that he can't get the barrel to it and hit it to the outfield. And that's in the do. Would love to see him get the green light, even with the 3-0 count right here. Let's see if he can create some magic. Ball four, he walked in. And that'll keep the line moving. He's making things difficult for himself right now out there on the mound, but, you know, his confidence should still be high enough to get out of this, but he's going to have to buckle down right here. Here is Yohan Moncada. That one finds the zone. On. One. Winning run at third, one down. Here in extra innings. That smash towards center. Squeezes it. Runner tags from third. Across is the winning run. And the White Sox mark it off and win it 3-2. Well, you come to the ballpark hoping you'll see something special that day, whether you're a player or a fan. A walk-off win, nobody forgets that. A memorable moment that'll be logged in the backs of the minds of everybody that witnessed this here today. A 3-2 final score in this one. For Chris Singleton and our entire crew, I'm John Chambi saying so long from the south side of Chicago.